Hello, it's me Kumaisi Lakwasi Tile again. We are still on our debt management module of the Personal Finance Mastery. Today we are doing a little bit of expansion and today I want us to talk about, to address this question, how much debt is enough for me? You need to ask yourself this question as an individual. How much debt can I afford? How do you then answer this question? Before we can even go into answering this question, I want you to think about this word over indebtedness. I'm sure we've heard it. What do we mean by over indebtedness? When we say, when we, when we, when we talk about over indebtedness, we are referring to a household that has got too much debt relative to the income. So where are you right now? Do you feel like you've got too much debt relative to your income? You need to ask yourself. So let's answer the question, how much debt can I afford? Normally there is no right or wrong answer. It's really about you as well because you need to have boundaries in your life. You hear more especially when it comes to your money because if you don't set boundaries, everyone and everybody is going to sell you a product and you're going to end up taking it and committing a lot of your money. But remember, I always caution that too much debt can lead to financial difficulties. They're not joking when they say that. I'm sure you've seen this statement everywhere. Even our regulator is enforcing our debt service providers to really disclose this fact to everyone who is going to get into the debt market. Too much debt can lead to financial difficulties. But let's talk about how much debt can I afford? For us to answer this question, we look at what we call the debt to income ratio. This is a very important ratio. I want you to note it down, debt to income ratio. What is this ratio really meant to do? This ratio is going to compare your total loan installments versus your income. And they has to be somewhere where you say this is what is enough. Normally our financiers, those who are regulated, there is a benchmark that they use. For the commercial banks, we know that most of them, they would say not more than 50% of your gross should be committed to towards um, debt servicing. If more than 50% of your debt, of your income is committed to debt servicing, this is where you are now shifting towards over indebtedness. Why? This debt ratio is meant to protect you because there is an understanding that your income should only should not only be uh, used towards servicing debt. There's an understanding that part of your income should go towards um, your basic needs. So if you commit 100% of your income, you are more likely to suffer. So I always say that the lower the percentage, the better for you. If that percentage is high, it's an indication that you are over indebted. It's an indication that you are heading towards disaster. So, but we say that a lot of individuals find themselves in situations where the debt to income ratio is already high, like 70 or 80 percent of the income is committed towards debt servicing. So if you find yourself in that situation, where do you do? What do you do? Where do you look? Do you bury your head in the sand and say, oh my gosh, my life is over. What do you do? Because this is reality. This is reality of life. We're finding people who are finding themselves in this kind of situations and they need to get out. And it's very difficult. And we know that a lot of people are going through financial difficulties, financial distress, because they have overcommitted their income. So my challenge to you is, is that set your own benchmark. If the financial services industry is saying 50% of your gross income, say maybe 30%, maybe I'm comfortable with 40%, set a benchmark for yourself so that you know what you're comfortable with paying. Because remember at the end of the day, peace of mind is more important to you. For you to continue earning that income, you need peace of mind. So if you find yourself in a situation where you're over indebted, there are some debt management strategies that you can implement to make sure that you put your debts under control. We talk about these debt management strategies and let me just take you through the four simple things, the four simple strategies that you can implement if you're over indebted. The first one is what we call debt consolidation. I sort of like don't like talking about debt consolidation because it's not like a permanent solution. It's a temporary solution. So with debt consolidation, what you're essentially doing is you're just treating the symptoms. You're not treating the real problem. So what is debt consolidation? So when you consolidate your debts, what you are doing is you are going to go to one financier 
take a big loan, use this loan money to settle all the other many loans so that at the end of the day you are remaining with just one loan, one service provider to deal with. So you were overwhelmed because you had so many debts all over the place. Now you are sort of like putting them under one pot so you can only have one financier that you deal with. That is debt consolidation. You can realize here that you have not eliminated your debts, but you've just grouped them. You've just put them in a pot but they're still there you still have to pay them so i say that if you go you take the route of debt consolidation there are certain steps that you have to take first you need to make sure that you are getting the best pricing out there negotiate the best interest rate because you are going to end up paying more in interest because with debt consolidation what we have said remember is you are now resetting your debt clock meaning that you are going to pay the interest on this new loan but remember already you have paid interest on the many other loans maybe some of them were halfway through now you are taking them back two way to zero so you need to make sure that you are negotiating the best possible rate out there and also when you look at your debts and you go through the debt consolidation route i say if your debt is only left with maybe less than 12 months you're already there just cross over please just be patient work through it and cross over don't consolidate it less than 12 months don't consolidate it just find a way to pay it off because it's not worth it it's not worth consolidating so these are the two things that i wanted to to think about when you you've decided to go the debt consolidation route so the other strategies really they are meant to eliminate now when you want once you have decided that you know what this debt it's just a financial burden. I want to do away with it. That is when we talk about debt elimination. And let's talk about the strategies that you can use. The two strategies, key strategies that you can use. The first one, we call it debt snowball. The other one, we call it debt avalanche. I want to remind you that all these strategies, they are going to require some bit of work on your part. Because the secret for paying off your debt is just paying extra. All these strategies that are going to employ you to pay extra you need to find extra money somewhere but remember i'm talking to somebody who's already here with this like you 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 already there's no briefing space in your income but i'm challenging you to go and find that extra money so little things that you have to do little uncomfortable things that you have to do you have to go down and budget have to go down and review your budget because you need to find that extra money somewhere if it means cutting certain things in your life you have to do that because you understand that you need to compromise right now for a better life in the future or maybe you have looked you've looked through your budgeting and there's really no room for you to cut expenses there's literally nothing that you can do if you are in that position then i'm saying you still have the brains you're still surviving you still have the brains maybe it's time for you to think about expanding your means expanding your means i'm referring to side hustling maybe it's time for you to think about what else can i do with my time i'm working eight hours what about the other hours what can i do to create that extra money even if it's 200 even if it's 100 it's something it's something it can take you somewhere so once you have the extra money now we move to the two strategies well so with that snowball this is what you are going to do that snowball you are going to start by first arranging all your debts in order of size you are going to start with the smallest debt to the largest debt and what you are going to do is the extra money that you found either by cutting your expenses or by expanding your means you are going to pay it as extra towards the debt with the smallest balance the rest of the debts you continue paying the minimum that is required but you're going to focus on the smallest debt you pay the extra pay the extra until that first smallest debt is eliminated once that small debt is eliminated the money that you were paying on that small debt because remember this money is the minimum that is required plus the extra money that you were paying you are going to take that money pay it on the second smallest debt 
So once you have cleared debt number two, what you're going to do is you're going to take the money that you were paying on debt number two, you move it to debt number three. You are going to continue in that manner until all the debts are paid off. I tell you that this strategy really works for somebody who is looking for motivation. Somebody who is somebody who is motivated by quick wins. You know, you win with the small debt, you are inspired to say, okay, I can keep moving, I can go to the second one. So it works on the psychological effects of seeing quick wins and being inspired by those quick wins and carrying on the momentum to keep doing what you are doing. That is debt snowball explained. So debt avalanche is sort of like the reverse of what we spoke about here. So debt avalanche really you are going to focus on the cost of debt. You are going to arrange your debts in order of um, the most expensive debt. You are going to have your most expensive debt first. So how do you decide which debt is the most expensive? You are going to look at the interest rate that you are charged on your debt. You are rent them in that order and then what you are going to do is remember we said you have to find extra money somewhere. You are going to take that extra money that you found. You are going to pay it as extra on the most expensive debt first and then the rest of the debts you are going to carry on paying the minimum you pay extra on the first debt until it's paid off once the most expensive debt is paid off you are going to take that money apply it on the second debt you continue in that manner until the debts are paid off so this strategy really it appeals for somebody who is who wants to be mathematically correct somebody who's looking to fight the cost of debt this is the strategy for you and then one thing that I always want to share is that all these strategies, when they're talking about them, they sound like very theoretical and you might be asking yourself, have they worked for somebody else? Has I am here. I'm a living testimony of these two strategies. I have been able to pay off 340,000 in 17 months using debt snowball and debt avalanche. So for me, it was a hybrid. I mixed the two. So when I started, I started off with the debt snowball because I needed that motivation to see that I can do it. I paid off the, the smallest balance debt, two of my smallest balance debts, and then I moved to the most expensive debt. So it was really hybrid for me so those are the two debt elimination strategies that you can start implementing today if you want to get out of debt so the fourth strategy of debt management that we are going to talk about is what we call debt settlement so debt settlement debt settlement really is for is for someone who is your debts have gotten out of control you are so behind you've got arrears you're sort of like defaulting on your debts and with debt settlement what is going to happen is it is going to involve the court of laws this is where you are going to go to court with your financier and you are going to negotiate something that can work for you so it forces you to be very transparent to put all the facts on the table explain why you have been failing to pay off your debts and then maybe the courts will hear you maybe your financier will also hear you and then once you have you reach an agreement we call it a debt settlement agreement that you have to make sure that you implement so those are the four debt management strategies remember the first one we spoke about debt consolidation and debt consolidation is just you trying to clean up your debts, bringing them in one port, you are not eliminating them. But if you want to eliminate, we now talk about the two strategies, debt snowball and debt avalanche. And if your debts have gotten out of control to a point where you are like facing foreclosure, now we talk about debt settlement. I always like to remind you that, you know, these things happen. If you find yourself in a situation where you are struggling, you're financially embarrassed, please don't bury your head in the sand. Speak out, go see your financier, go talk to them, be transparent, and maybe they can help you because at the end of the day, they are looking at you paying them and you also want to pay them. So you need to demonstrate that willingness by being transparent, by being upfront, by being pre active and taking action because debt is part of our lives and sometimes things happen things that are out of control that are going to lead you into financial difficulties but i always like to remind you that if you are going through financial difficulties is not the end of the world you can come out of that situation so this is really the conclusion of our debt management strategy or debt uh, module debt management and i hope you 
there's something, one or two things that you will take and implement in your life. This is all that I had for you. Thank you very much.